So when we draw the sine graph, what parts of the unit circle are signed? The x or the y? Y. Y is sine, x is cos, correct? So if you think about it this way, it's your, oh, I hate this computer. Okay, at zero degrees or zero radians, let's say, right? And here, what's my coordinate? What is that? Over, what's the radius of the unit circle, people? One, up, zero. So actually, at zero radians, sine has a y value of zero. Remember, these are my answers, correct? My answers are just my y values. The inside is just my angles, correct? So at zero, I have a y value of zero. Plot the dot. And I'm going to go to pi over 2 next. So this is pi over 2. What's my y value? 1, what's my x value? Do I care about my x value? No, I just care about this. So my x value, the coordinate for sine would be pi over 2 and 1. Then I'm going to go to pi. I don't know why I drew it there. This coordinate is negative 1 and 0. But the only thing I care about, because I'm drawing the sine graph, is 0. So my point for the sine graph is at pi and 0. And then I have 3 pi over 2. And this one's at 0 and negative 1. So I don't care about that one. I just care about the negative 1. So it's at 3 pi over 2 and negative 1. So I'm making this be 1, 1, 5. And then I go back to 2 pi, which is here, and it's back to 0. Now, if I give you guys like an actual x-axis in degrees, you can come up with what the scale is. The scale is what the ticks are all worth, because you just figure it out mathematically and you'd be fine. When I give you guys an x-axis in radians, you're like, I don't know what every tick is unless you tell me. So I'm going to show you how to figure out what ticks are. So please pay attention. So we don't know what each of these is worth, correct? Like if we look here, I don't know what these are. I know that this is pi over 2, correct? So the easiest way to figure out what each of those ticks are worth is I go to pi always and then count how many ticks it gets me there. So this is pi here, right? How many ticks does it take me to get there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six ticks from 0 to pi. We agree? So what am I doing then? I'm taking pi and I'm dividing it by how many ticks to get me from 0 to pi? 6, right? So if I want to know what each of those ticks are worth, I have pi distance cut into 6 pieces. That's just pi divided by 6. We agree? If I, my distance of ticks to pi was 8, then each tick would be worth pi over 8 because it's just pi cut into 8 pieces, right? If I had 4 ticks to get me to pi, then it, each one would be worth pi over 4 because it would be pi divided 4 pieces, right? So how do we label them? Well, this one would be 1 pi over 6. You don't have to label them, you just watch. This would be 2 pi over 6, but it reduces to pi over 3. And then I have pi over 2, which is actually 3 pi over 6, but it reduced to pi over 2, right? And this would be 4 pi over 6, but what is it reduced to? 2 pi over 3. And then I have 5 pi over 6, which is reduced. And then I have 6 pi over 6, which is pi. Then I have 7 pi over 6. Then I have 8 pi over 6, which reduces to 4 pi over 3. And then I have 9 pi over 6, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. Then I have 10 pi over 6, which is reduced to 5 pi over 3. Then I have 11 pi over 6. Then I have 12 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi. And then as the graph kept going, go 13 pi over 6, 14 pi over 6, 15 pi over 6, and I'm labeling them. Okay? But I'm always labeling them with the reduced version. So I'm going to erase this off for a second here, and I'm going to label them with reduced versions just so they match my unit circle. Oops, I took off point. So this would be pi over 6. This would be 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. 3 pi over 6 or pi over 2. 4 pi over 6 or 2 pi over 3. 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6, which is pi. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6, which is 4 pi over 3. 
9 pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. 11 pi over 6. 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. Do you understand how I labeled it? Do you understand how to find out what the ticks are? It's really quite easy. It's super overwhelming to people. It shouldn't be overwhelming, OK? All of these are actual ones that are on the unit circle. I split it into everything except for pi over 4. So if I went to the unit circle at pi over 6, which is 30, my sign is a half, isn't it? So at pi over 6, I have a half. At pi over 3, it's 3 pi over 2, which is 0.866, so it's up here. Pi over 2, my y is 1. At 2 pi over 3, my y is root 3 over 2, which is 0.866. At 5 pi over 6 on my unit circle, my y is a half. Then at pi, it's back to 0. At 7 pi over 6, my y is negative a half. At 4 pi over 3, my y is negative 0.866. At 3 pi over 2, my y is negative 1. At 5 pi over 3, my y is negative 0.866. 11 pi over 6, negative 0.5, and I'm back to here. So this is actually drawing that circle with respect to time. So it's actually visibly drawing it out as I'm going along. So that's if I took this circle and I started rotating it and drawing all the heights, right? So this would be at like time 0, and then as I went along, I got higher. And then I went down to lower, then back up to higher. So it's a way to represent the graph actually sideways, not in just a circle. Because really what we're seeing right now when we were doing coterminals is we just kept going around like this and around like this and around like this. But we could visually visualize it with respect to x. So what does a sine graph always start at? 0, 0. It maxes at 1. It means at negative 1, which makes sense because my unit circle maxes at 1 and mins at negative 1. And then it goes back to here. It repeats itself how, how long? How long does it take to repeat itself, full circle? How many radians is a full circle? 2 pi. So it takes 2 pi to repeat itself. Because after this, what's going to happen? It's just going to do the same thing again, over and over and over. What if I went this way? It would just be the same graph over and over and over. So this graph actually repeats itself every 2 pi. So the period is the length um, of the interval of the domain over which a graph repeats itself. So the period of this graph is 2 pi. You need to understand the definitions because they will ask you these things. So the period is 2 pi, how long it takes to repeat itself. Okay, how long it takes to do a full circle. The amplitude is half the distance between the max and the min. Or you can use this formula and memorize it. It's the absolute values of max and min because your amplitude is always positive. So if I did it just definitional, I would say, hey, from my min to my max, if I counted it, this takes me 0.5, then it takes me 1 to get to here, then 1.5, then 2 to get to the top, correct? So the distance from my min to my max is 2, so my amplitude would be 1. Your amplitude is always positive because it's a distance, just like the radius is always positive because it's a distance. So if you wanted the amplitude of a graph, you could literally just count from min to max and divide by 2 because it's half the distance. Or you could use this lovely formula and go amplitude equals the absolute value of the max, which is 1, minus the min, which is negative 1, divided by 2, which is the absolute value of 2, divided by 2. Absolute value is positive, because distance from 0, 2 divided by 2, and it's 1. So you can use the formula and do it, or you can say, hey, count from min to max, divide from 2, because amplitude is just half a distance. So if I counted up, it took me 2 to get from the bottom to the top, so the amplitude's 1, half that distance. So the amplitude of a basic sine graph is 1. We said that. And the period we said was 2 pi. The domain is XER, on less restricted. Right? Because this graph will go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, right? 
So when we're finding solutions, that's why we get infinite number of solutions because these graphs just keep going. They're, they're periodic functions. They keep repeating and repeating and repeating. So unless I restrict the domain on you guys, you would have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so the domain is XER in set notation or negative infinity to positive infinity in interval notation. What's my range? Are all the Y values in the world on this graph? Does it go forever to the top and forever to the bottom? No? Where does it min out at? Negative 1. And where does it max out at? 1. And all the Y values in between are there, right? So we want between negative 1 and 1, correct? So when you go to do the range of any sine graph, you're going to do this. You're going to go Y such that the minimum is less than or equal to Y is less than or equal to the maximum. I'm going to write over this. I don't care. Y here. So in this case, it's going to be y such that negative 1 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 1 y er. And the reason why that is the case is because you read from the y. They're both in l's. You go low to high, l's. And the reason why is you read from the y. So this is saying y is open to negative 1. So y is greater than or equal to negative 1. And then you read from the y this way. It's close to the y. So y is less than or equal to 1. That's why they're in the same direction, because you read from the y. My y-intercept of this sine function is 0, 0. And my x-intercepts happen at 0 and every how many later? So they start at 0, and then it happens again at pi, and then it happens again at 2 pi, and then 3 pi, and then 4 pi, and then negative pi, and then negative 2 pi, and then negative 3 pi. Every zeros and pi's, correct? So my thetas. My theta is because it's the angle, right? My x-axis is in angles, radians or degrees. Would be 0, pi, 2 pi. I could have negative pi. I could have negative 2 pi. And it could keep going, right? So instead of writing it like that, they write it as a general solution. How do we write it as a general solution? We pick the smallest angle and how much it takes to get to the next one. N, N-E-I. Remember that? We add integers to it because it's like, you can fill in a 1 or a negative 1 or a 0. So what's our smallest angle? 0. So we're going to go 0. And I don't put a degree symbol because it's in radian. 0. And then how much does it take till I get to the next one? Pi, then pi, then pi, then pi. It's just pi all the time to get me to the next ones, right? So then I go plus pi n. And I go n e i. Why do I do i? Why do I do integers? Because it can be positives or negatives, yeah. So if I fill in a 0, then I times by pi plus 0, I get the angle 0, right? If I fill in a 1, I get 0 plus pi, which is pi. If I fill in a negative 1, I get 0 plus negative pi, which is negative pi. And it gets me all the solutions. The only catch is, if it's a 0, your smallest positive angle, you just don't write it. So if your positive angle is anything but 0, so I always write it like this so it makes sense, and then you just... Because if I go 0 plus anything, it just is that, right? So they'll always just write it as pi n n e i then. OK, let's type in our calculus and see if we can get it to look. So we're going to go y equals sine theta. Theta is just the x button. There's a theta x n button. It, you can just use that button. You, it can be an x. It's fine. So you're going to go into your calculator and you're going to go sine x. I don't have it on this calculator or on this computer, which sucks. So you're going to go to y equals and you're going to put in sine x. Wait a second, you press the sine button. What should you have just done first? Went to your mode and decided what mode did we want to be in. What mode was this graph in? This graph was in what mode? Radian. So we're going to press radian. So the moment you go to press that button, you have to think, what mode do I need to be in, right? Always. OK, then we're going to go to our window. Right now, our window's at negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. Is that the same window I just drew? No, it's not a really great trig window. If you are super stuck, you're like, oh, I cannot get this to show up. You could press zoom trig, and it'll at least set it to a trig window. OK, if you're super stuck, you can press zoom trig after you've changed it to whatever mode you want. And it'll at least give you a trig window and drive it somehow. 
Okay? But if I want the exact same window as I have here, I'm going to go to Window. Okay? What's my X minimum here? Zero. What's my X max? 2 pi. So you type in 2 pi, it'll turn it to a decimal. That's absolutely fine. Just let it go. So your X min is 0. Your X max is 2 pi. It goes up by pi over 6. So I'm going to go pi divided by 6 in my X scale. What's my Y min? Negative 1. What's my Y max? 1. What did I go up by? 0.25. And then I'm going to press graph. Does it give you that graph? Yeah? Now, just to show you that you freak out when you don't think the window's right, go mode, degree, and press graph. What happens? You just get a little tiny graph line, right? That's because right now, your window is set between 0 and 2 pi, correct? Which is the same as 0 and 360 degrees, right? But your window is between 0 and 2 pi. 0 and 2 pi is 0 and 6.4 something, correct? So now you change it to degree mode, you're now seeing the graph from 0 to 6 degrees. How much graph are you seeing? Very little, right? So that's why you're only getting a little tiny portion. So you have to remember that the moment you go to press sine, cos, or tan, you have to change your window and your mode to be what you need it to be. Because your window may have been in degrees, and you're trying to see it in radian. It doesn't make sense, like, right? So you have to make sure that when you go to press that button, you pick a mode, but you also have to make sure your window fits the mode. So if you're super stuck, like I said, zoom trig, at least it'll get it into the radian mode or degree mode of what you're in, so at least there's a fighting chance of seeing it. So if you're super stuck, zoom trig is that thing to go to. Okay. What if we did the cos graph? What's the only thing that would change? You would take the x values for your y, which sounds stupid. But you would take the x values off the unit circle, which would now be your y, because cos is always the x values, right? So at 0, I have the coordinate 1, 0. Now, because I'm drawing coast graphs, I just look at this. So my coordinates at 0, 1. Then at pi over 2, it's at 0, 1. So it might x is 0. So it's at pi over 2 and 0. And for pi, it's at negative 1, 0. So it's at pi and negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, it's at 0 and negative 1. So it's at 3 pi over 2 and 0. If I was doing the sign, it'd be 3 pi over 2 and negative 1, right? And then at 2 pi, we're back to 1. If it was sine, I'd do 2 pi and 0. And then we have our in-betweens. So this is pi over 6, and then et cetera, uh, pi over 3, um, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 3. Something is wrong with my thing. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is 4 pi over 3. My pi over 3s are off. Yeah. One, pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, so 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 5 pi over 3, 11 pi over 6. There. Um, so at pi over 6, right here, my coordinate is root 3 over 2 and a half. I care about this one. So pi over 6, I'm at root 3 over 2, which is 0.866. At pi over 3, I'm at 
at pi over 2, I'm at 0. At 2 pi over 3, I'm at negative 0.5. At 5 pi over 6, I'm at negative 0.866. 7 pi over 6, negative 0.866. 4 pi over 3, negative 0.5. 0, 5 pi over 3, 0.5, 0.866. Okay? So my domain's still the same, XER, correct? My range is still the same. Negative 1 is less than or equal to Y is less than or equal to 1. My domain is XER. My y-intercept now is 0 and 1. My period, it still repeats itself every 2 pi because it's from a max to a max. Max to a max is your period. So 2 pi. And then after that, it would start repeating itself again. The amplitude is from min to max divided by 2. So from min to max is a distance of 2. 2 divided by 2 is still 1. My amplitude didn't change. My theta intercepts do change. It's at pi over 2 now here, and then at pi, 3 pi over 2, so every pi after that. So I would go, my smallest, bless you, my smallest is pi over 2, and then every pi after that, right? It's going to land back on. So my general solution is pi over 2 plus pi n, n e i. So add pi and pi and pi and pi and pi and pi and pi or backwards. Okay, do this for me. You have your y equals sine x in your calculator right now, right? In y2, put y equals cos x, and then arrow over and make it thicker. So in y2, put cos x, and then arrow over to that slanted line and hit enter and make it thicker. And then press graph. Do they look like very similar graphs? Same height, same period, same everything, correct? They're just a what from each other? A horizontal phase shift is what it's called. They're a horizontal phase shift from each other. We're going to do transformations again, guys. They're a horizontal phase shift from each other. So let's think about this. If I drew, you guys don't do this, because it'll confuse the crap out of you, but if I drew the sine graph quickly on here, um, don't do this, I'm just showing you. So if I drew the sine graph quickly on here, they're very similar, correct? This green graph here, which is the sine graph, this is the y equals sine x graph. It's a really thick marker. If I shift it pi over 2 to the left, it's actually the red graph, isn't it? If I take the red graph and I shift it pi over 2 to the right, it's actually the green graph, isn't it? So if we leave our sine x graph there, you have your sine x in y1, right? If I want my cos graph to be my sine graph, I'm going to have to take my cos graph and move it pi over 2 to the right, am I not? So I have y equals cos x currently in my calculator, correct? I need it to move pi over 2 to the right. So what's going to have to join my x? Pi over 2, and if I want it to go to the right, I'm going to have to do what with that pi over 2? Subtract it. So into your y2, you're actually going to type in cos x minus pi over 2. If you can't get the fraction to show up, you have to put in brackets. So if you go alpha y equals and get the fraction, you don't have to put in brackets. If you can't get the fraction, you have to put in brackets. And you put that in your y2 and you make it thicker still. And they better draw themselves on top of each other. Do you get the same graph? Yeah, so sine and cos graphs are actually the same. They're just a 90 degree shift from each other. That's all they are. 90 degree shift away from being the same thing. Okay? Now, we're going to deal with a whole bunch more of the actual changes tomorrow. But what I'm going to get you to do is we're going to practice more solving. Solving in harder ways. So all I've done solving so far with you guys is sine, cos, and tans, right? What if I gave you a secant or a cosecant or a cotan? What if I gave you degree 2 functions? 
So we're going to go through a little bit of solving at the end of each. So separate piece of paper. Oh, this marker. Do I care about the domain right now? Yeah. Yeah. Do I care about the domain right now? No. Do I let the domain throw me off because it's not between 0 and 360 and freak out? No. I'm still going to find it between 0 and 360. My biggest issue is I only have the button sign cos and tan. Do I not? Do I have a cosecant button? No. Do I have something that I can replace cosecant with that I do have a button for? Yes. So I go to my formula sheet. And cosecant can be replaced with 1 over sine. So I'm going to go to cosecant. I'm going to say, I don't like you. I need you to be one of the buttons I have in my calculator. So I'm going to replace you with 1 over sine. I need to get sine by itself. So what can I do? I can bring the sine theta up. And I can bring the 9.5 down. So I bring the sine theta up, and I bring the 9.5 down. I multiply the sine theta up, and I divide the 9.5. So I get sine theta equals 1 over 9.5. Now can I solve it just like I did before? Yeah, back to the three steps. Did that make it super complicated? No. Step one. What's step one? Reference angle. So I do theta equals sine neg 1 of the positive, 1 divided by 9.5. It is positive, but if it wasn't positive, I would still do it as positive. So I'm going to press second sign. What do I have to think? Oh, crap, I'm pressing one of those buttons. So I have to make sure I'm in whatever mode I want to be in, right? So I'm going to be in degree mode. So I'm going to go set mode, degree. Second sign, 1 divided by 9.5. When am I allowed to round? Very last step. Am I in the very last step? No. And your fancy calculators can keep and store all these decimals, so there's absolutely no reason why you don't keep them. Step one, reference angle. Step two, cast. So whenever I'm solving, I follow three steps in trig. Cast. How do I know where to go? I go back to the question, and it says where sine, once I've gotten into sine, sine is positive. So I need to look where sine is positive. Sine is positive at S and A. And it's a 6 degree, so it's even smaller than I'm drawing it. So I don't want to draw it too close. A little six degree reference angle, right? So, how long does it take to get me here? 6.042328419 degrees. So, whenever your reference angle is in quadrant one, it actually is the answer, correct? In quadrant two, you do 180 minus the reference angle because I got to get me to here. So this is going to be 180 minus 6.0423 degrees. So I'm going to get 173.9576716 degrees. So right now I have theta equals 6.0423. 28419 degrees and theta equals 173.9576716 degrees. We agree?
Okay. However, my domain is from negative 270 to 90. So this one's good. It's from negative 270 to 90, right? This one is not good. So what do I have to do? I can't include this one, but I can include its best friends called coterminal angles. So what do I have to do to it? Subtract 360. So I get negative 186.04232842. Is that in the domain? My domain was negative 270 to 90. So that's the same as saying 0 to negative 270, 0 to 90, right? So this one is good. This one is not good. If I subtract another 360 from 186, is that going to be bigger than 270? Yeah, so I'm not going to keep going, okay? So I'm done. Am I done? I still need to check what? The coterminal with this one. So if I subtract 360 from 6, I'm going to get... 253. I'm by 250. Yeah, 253. I'm by 250. 353. Am I getting a 353 point something? Is that in my domain? No. So do I have to keep going? No. So my two solutions actually are these: negative 186.04 degrees and 6.04 degrees. Does that make sense? Does the restricted domain scare you? Should it scare you? No, it's literally just coterminal angles. Okay? Follow the same three steps. We got it? So how can they amp it up? Because they will. They'll say solve. So they can amp it up by giving you a reciprocal trig identity, so cosecant. Or they can amp it up by not actually having solved for the isolated the cos or secant or sine. So if I did four cos to solve, four cos theta, I really need to make this marker thinner, minus three equals zero, and then I'm just going to do a nice degree. Zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 360. What have I done for you this entire time so far? What have I given you? Cos theta, sine theta, tan theta equals something, haven't I? I've just given you a trig ratio equal to something, and then you just started step one, step two, step three, correct? So what's the problem with this one? Cos theta is not isolated, correct? But can we do that really easily? Yeah. So the first thing you have to do is get it isolated, because you can't second cos, second tan, second sign anything that's not cos equals something, okay? So we're going to get 4 cos theta equals 3 by adding 3, divide by 4, cos theta equals 3 quarters. Now we're just back to the same question I would have given you before. And now once we've isolated cos theta, we can get theta by itself. The reason why we're cos negging 1, guys, is for this example. If I had a 4 in front of cos, what would I do to get rid of it? I'd divide by 4 because it's multiplication, correct? I now want to get theta by itself. How do I get that theta to go away? I cos neg one both sides. That's how I, Sorry, I, how do I get the cos to go away? I want theta by itself. I cos neg one both sides, and then this cos will cancel off. That's why we're cos neg one Okay. If I cos neg one this side, the cos and the cos neg one cancel, and then I'm left with the cos neg one on that side. So I have to isolate it so that I can cos neg one both sides. So step one, reference theta. Cos neg one of three quarters. 
everything we've done in this uh, unit, except for like finding in circle stuff, you did in grade 11, just all in degrees between 0 and 360. So this is all repeat. If it's not, and you feel like it's not, you should come in for review. Okay, because you have forgotten it. So I'm going to keep it in degree mode. So I'm going to press coast, second coast, 3 divided by 4. Step two, cast. It ended up being coast positive. Is it always positive? I've, although I've just picked all positive examples, is it always positive? No, I've just lucked out weirdly and picked all positives. So cast, so I need it to be positive cos. Cos is positive at C and A. It's reference angle 41, so it's almost halfway. That's where your reference angles are, 41. One of them is in quadrant one, so that's easy. Reference angle and quadrant one are the same. 41.41. I can round because I know my answers are between 0 and 360 and I don't have to get coterminals because I gave you a restricted domain between 0 and 360. To get this one, I have to do 360 minus my reference angle. So those are my two angles. The only thing we haven't finished in Chapter 4 is Degree 2 functions. So the entire Chapter 4 review, except for when it says solve with like a squared in it, you can do. You should be able to do this entire Chapter 4 review. So this isn't on the graphing. We're going hugely into graphing tomorrow. This is still solving again. So remember, if you're like, I'm overwhelmed, I'm not completely sure what I'm doing, I have a test on Thursday, hmm, I should maybe come in and see Mrs. Lepp. That would be the result. That's what I would do if it were me, but that's just me. So I'm going to post the review podcast for Chapter 4, too, so you can watch it as well. Okay? So if you want to come in, you can come in any lunch, but if you want to come in specifically for Trig 1 review and with a group Wednesday, Tomorrow and Tuesday, I said, right? Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. But I'm here for every lunch. I don't really leave.